All right, everybody. Um, this is uh, our new image library software, and it's called Open Asset. And we're really excited to introduce this uh, new system. We think it's going to greatly improve your workflow for creating and sharing marketing collateral. And um, the new system is going to make your search more efficient, uh, hopefully give you more options, and allow you to use it from anywhere. Uh, most importantly, it'll be faster. And here's why. Uh, it's integrated with our project database, so you can see the project info behind the images and make informed choices. It'll provide you with more options on how to use and download your images. And for the first time, you'll be able to access the image library from anywhere that you have an image that you have an internet connection. You can even make uh, selected images available to our clients and consultants right from the program without having to download them. And where our previous previous library was run out of the Sausalito office, now we're in the cloud. So that's going to mean that the speed is improved across every studio. Everyone's on a level playing field. Uh, I know you've been without images image access for a couple months now uh, because of the company-wide hack, and we've had to move up our rollout of the system a little early, and we're still working on ironing out all the kinks. So some of the functions are not ready, and you might experience some speed bumps along the way. So we're going to need your help so we can make the system run smoothly. Uh, for example, there's going to be some times when you'll be frustrated when certain keyword searches don't pull up the images you're looking for. Well, we want to know about that, and we want to take action to fix it. So if you could please note down what's happening, take a screen screenshot, if that makes sense, and give us as much information as possible so we can address the issue as quickly as possible. Uh, after this presentation, you're going to receive an email with a link on how to submit a help desk ticket. And uh, let's jump into it. All right. Uh, you're going to be getting uh, with that email also uh, your new login to get into the system. You'll still be able to access this through Swap when Swap is back up. But for right now, this is your interface to get in. Okay, and here we are. Uh, this is separated into three ways to search for and manage your images. The search box, projects, and albums. So search box is like the one that we've always used. Start to type in a keyword like pub, public realm, and instead of just doing an autocomplete, it'll let you know what that autocomplete is for. So before we do this, let me, when, when you arrive here, let me just say that uh, you'll be seeing the most current images and the top 20 of those current projects. So let's try public realm. There we go. So public realm and, you know, that's a lot. It's 2022 images. And let's say we're really trying to just narrow it down to a region. Let's try New York. Oops. So what we're doing here, we're adding a keyword and it's narrowing down our search, just like you do in Google. And when I said faster, I meant eventually. There we go. So 427. And that's great. We're seeing a lot of the projects that the uh, New York office has done. Hunter's Point, since that's the most current one we photographed. But what we're really looking is bike paths in New York City. So let's type in paths, bicycle. So you can see they're lining up. All your keywords are lining up, and you can take them off just as easily. So we should get, when this works, there we go. We got four. Four images for Hunter's Point in New York City, bike paths, and one unicyclist. 
Oh, in New York. All right, so um, at that point, you can select the ones you want, and they go down into your collection box, the one that used to be on the side in our old system. But uh, that may not be enough for what you want to do, so let's take off New York, and it should expand to, there we go, bike paths in public realm. So let's add a few more, Milton, and there should be some from Katy Trail as well. There we go. All right, so let's look at some of the images we've got up. When you click on an image, you'll get a very large view, comes up really quickly, and we can look at the information of when it was captured, the project it's from, and the keywords associated with it. And that's great because then when you find out what keywords associated with it, you can find images like that. So let's go back. Oh, and you can either add to your collection box right from here if you like that image or go to the next one. So let's return to the search. Okay, so when you roll over one of the images, you'll get a few, uh, few options. The first is this checkbox. This adds images to your collection. Secondly, and we think this is really important, is similar images. This is gonna look at the content of your image, and find images all over our library that look like it. And this is gonna get better over time, but for right now you can see, you know, we picked an easy one. The bike is easy to uh, identify, and there's a good one from Belgrade, so we'll add that as well. All right, um, you don't have to put everything into a, down, into a collection box. You can download straight from here and you can also um, create an album from here. Okay, um, one of the new functions that we're pretty excited about is to be able to take your, whoops, take your image that you've got right there in your search result and drag it with this purple uh, tag, drag it straight into PowerPoint. You don't have to download, it'll go straight there. It pops right in, sized for PowerPoint. We're gonna have the same functionality with InDesign eventually when we get on the creative cloud for the whole company. Okay, so now that we have um, a selection of images, we can do a few things with it. Um, let's just select a few here. And speaking of PowerPoint, we've uploaded a template here and we can we might be changing it over time, but for right now, you go to PowerPoint, Slideshow, Download. Let's use the nine files that we've got here and yeah, let's just do a po one PowerPoint show. You can choose PDF as well and generate document. Right now it's taking your images, using a template that we uploaded and creating a file that's downloaded already. Let's bring it up. And there it is. Let's get rid of this one. So you can see it populated it it brought in the name of the project with the SWA logo on the side in very little time. You can download an Excel document eventually, but we're, that's functionality is coming soon. You can also do a contact sheet. This will create a contact sheet of your images that you've chosen and give you a downloadable PDF to show to a teammate or send off to a client. And you can decide how much you, information you want in there and how many images you want on each page and then create PDF to download. And there it is.
You can do the same thing with printing. This is gonna give you uh, all your selections, send it straight to the printer, full bleed on a piece of paper that you can choose what size you want it. Of course, download. And to select, maybe all of these images work except those ones that you've clicked. Well, we can do that too. Select all, select none, invert selection. There you go. Clear selection. When you do want to search, you can see these are up here. To do another search, you have to click this red button. So it's in red, and there you go, you've cleared it out. Let's go back to public realm. Get a few in there, and then we can go to projects and albums. Okay, the next big piece is projects. Here you can see all the SWA projects that we've got uh, loaded into the system. You can search by name or by job number, which is great. Let's go to Hunters. That's the one we want. You can see a preview of the images, preview of all the information. If that's the one you want, click on it. And there we go. You'll see the top images for that project. You can click on them, make them bigger, go through them. It'll still give you that same metadata that you saw on the, on the other interface. It'll give you all the information that we have on it that would be on a tear sheet or the image database, or the, I'm sorry, project database, where it is. If you click location, it'll give you an interactive map. And once again, you can add them to your collection basket. Okay, so let's go back. And you've got five images that you want to share or that you want to save and revisit a little at a later time. You know, a lot of times we download images, put them into a folder, keep them on our desktop, keep them in a transfer folder. But you have the ability to save them here. And that's add to album. Let's create a new album, call it Public Realm. Oops. And we're going to set it as our current album. Great. So you click on Albums, and there's our current album. Here are other albums that people have shared, one on Avenida, one on California Academy. And you can do the same. You can keep these albums as yours only or share them out. Here we're seeing all the albums. If you pull that down, owned by me, I'll just show you yours. Okay, so here's our public realm. Once again, you can view them, create that contact sheet. But most importantly is to create a web download. This is how you will share with people who are out of our network. Not going to call it that. Well, oh, I guess we are. Yeah, okay, well, let's do California Academy. Um, select your file size. Let's make it small just to be quick. And create web download. All right. You can write a description of what you want to tell your client or consultant. Copy that email or copy that URL, paste it into an email, and save. And you send that uh, link to anyone and they can come up and it will uh, view like in here and they'll be able to download those images, but you control what size they can download. All right, now let's go back to the most important part, which is downloading. So in your collection basket, you can remove items from the album, create that PowerPoint show again, your contact sheet, your print, and most importantly, download. And there's our interface. The original sizes, 
presentation for PowerPoint set for 1920 by 1080, a smaller email version, and medium for print. Uh, if we need any other sizes, please let us know. So I'm going to choose original and start download. That's it. We get a zip file. And there are images. All right, there's more to this. More things are coming. Once again, we really need your help. If keywording is not quite where it should be, if things are misplaced, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, at this point, I'd like to open it up for questions. This is Masako in Los Angeles. Um, regards to images for every project that's like from the design stage, are you requesting that the studios push images to you? Because I'm pretty sure imaging does not have like the rendering and the plan and some of the diagrams, et cetera, that we use for projects. Yeah, I think that would be I think that'd be wonderful to get those images. Um, we get a lot of them from the project book um, when we put that together every six months. But uh, if there are images that you think that we need or that we need to share out, so your staff and other other people can use them, yeah, definitely send a, send us our send them our way. Um, I also want to okay. introduce. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I also want to introduce uh, Christina Wang. She's from Open Asset, and if you have any technical questions that I can't answer, she can help us with those. I'm sorry, Masako. What was that? Oh, um, regards to like the projects, images. Are you going to put them in Open Assets? What? What project images? Which ones? Right, from the projects up when we submit um, in progress drawings and um, yes, so all of those images not... just from uh, as far as I'm aware of. This is David. Uh, you know, Mark over time uh, and and working with Liz, uh, all of the images that are submitted for the project book eventually do get uploaded into Open Assets, so you can find all of the drawings and diagrams. It's, it's all of the same assets that we've been collecting in Picture Park. Um, if there are, you know, newer images or, or throughout the year, uh, you know, as Bill said, um, you know, just have to let us know and we can get those uploaded into that particular project. Okay. Uh, is that going to be something that we systematically do? Because I think like, um, for the very first push, it's going to be a lot of images. I mean, I I could show you offline what our image library looks like when we're looking at looking for images for 9300 Culver, for example, which isn't finished yet. How we collect the JPEGs and renderings, etc. Um, but I I think often I I get requests for certain projects before completion, and it would be great to have it available on Open Asset as well. Right. Yeah, yeah, we, we can talk about the, the workflow and system for that. I mean, primarily, you know, each office individually stores all of their project assets, uh, you know, from beginning to end locally on their server, and then what we make, um, you know, uh, downloadable and available to all of the other staff for those approved either final graphics or maybe a, a set of initial uh, round of renderings or graphics that people want to make available. Um, there de definitely has to be some oversight in how much gets placed in there. And also if graphics are no longer, uh, you know, maybe approved or the design has changed and we don't want to make them available. So the project is misrepresented. Um, you know, we, we would definitely have to have some type, like you said, some systemic way to, uh, to manage all of those assets. But, you know, open asset is still primarily a, project uh, image and graphics library, uh, you know, based on what is submitted uh, for marketing and other design 
uh, you know, phases throughout the process. It's it's not going to be a uh, product that you would manage all of your project assets locally as well for each office, at least in the, the near term. That's Glenn. Glenn and Sausalito, I'm just interjecting here that this is why it's important when you prepare your spreads for the project newsletter that you are preparing them as linked JPEGs or TIFFs. Um, do not make a composition within the InDesign because we're not able to export that into open assets. If you're doing labeling, you need to do that as an Illustrator file or resave what you're doing as a PDF and have it inserted into the newsletter as a single image flattened. And that way it can be imported into open assets. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, honestly, no. I just had another. I just had another question. Um, maybe you covered this. Is video footage, um, for instance, like drone video or video of a project or clips, is that available on Open Asset as well? Yeah, we we plan to do that. Uh, we haven't done it yet. We're still, you know, we want to get the images up there and out to people, but we're trying to figure out a workflow on how to do that. How much to put up there? What to put up there? Um, Yes, that is definitely in our plan to serve up video, and this system certainly has the capability to do that. Yeah, and just uh, circling back to uh, Glenn's, uh, you know, d discussion here. Um, I mean, one of the things that we liked about the this product in particular is the uh, integration with uh, some of the Adobe products, and InDesign is a, one of the. Um, the products that there is a seamless integration so that uh, you can you know drag and drop directly into InDesign uh, and also manage files within InDesign uh, and that should help with I know there have been a number of issues with you know file sizes and the size of InDesign documents uh, but we are not making that available at the moment it requires creative cloud um, you know obviously everything is moving to the cloud at this point so we need to wait until SWA upgrades to the Creative Cloud to really take advantage of those features. Uh, but there are uh, some people that have uh, InDesign, and we'll be using them as kind of the test or beta testers for that particular plugin. Um, Any other questions? Uh, the bill or Yep. This is Bill and Sausalito. I've, I've got a question regarding the PowerPoint, and I was wondering if if we're gonna if everything is catered to uh, 1080 or 16 by 9 aspect ratio, or if we're going to have the ability of exporting a PowerPoint at the 4:3 uh, aspect ratio as well. Yeah. Like, oh, great question. Um, you know, um, most of our stuff is, is landscape oriented, uh, but like iPads and many right. of our bigger projection screens that we use in shared conference rooms are the older aspect ratio. Yeah, uh, absolutely. In fact, I was uh, I made that template this morning and I kind of struggled with like, oh, oh what am I going to, you know, which one? I, I ended up going with, um, you know, a widescreen one. But yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's something we need all three of. We need uh, two thirds, three fourths, um, and uh, 16 by nine. And we'll be able to choose which one you want to use yeah. to create those. And then also, uh, you know, the uh, Marcom has been working on a um, uh, SWA PowerPoint template, uh, you know, full overview of SWA. It has multiple images at all different sizes, square images. I don't know if everybody has seen that template in particular, but uh, we will be eventually uploading that template uh, into there, into uh, Open Asset. But as Bill showed you, uh, you could take any template that you currently have or that you may use for clients, uh, open it within PowerPoint, and then drag directly into that template. What we're trying to do is uh, take advantage of this new PowerPoint uh, builder feature within Open Asset, and we'll be uploading, you know, a, a number of different PowerPoint templates, uh, especially within the you know brand guidelines and styled. Uh, uh, so that it's uh, all within our, our, our brand uh, style guide. Um, and as Bill said, I mean, the 16 by nine certainly is a, is a ratio that, uh, you know, that works for our, uh, most monitors and, you know, high resolution, the TVs. Uh, the only issue is, is that 
um, you know, as everyone understands, is that all of the photos are shot at a two three ratio. Uh, there's a multiple different sizes that are out there now with different cameras and even iPhones and what they shoot. Um, Exporting out a, a 16 by 9 image uh, would require the image to be cropped. Uh, so there is going to be some manual uh, oversight when you're exporting out at a 16 by 9 image to make sure that the image is cropped in the way that, you know, you, you might want to represent that particular image. But the nice thing is, is that we have the ability to uh, work with a number of different sizes and templates and have an image uh, sized to that particular template. So again, that should save a lot. I know one of the issues on servers is putting original image sizes. So the files of these PowerPoint shows can be really large. Also with InDesign using full size images. Now they have, um, you know, pretty standard, uh, not just across our company, but industry wide uh, standard set up for importing and dragging and dropping images into these files. So that should help with some of the, those issues that we've been trying to resolve. But overall, uh, I mean, we're really excited about the product. Uh, you know, we, we demoed this uh, to the marketers, uh, Gerdo and Scott and team, everybody had a look at this. Uh, one of the things that we're unable to show you at the moment because Swap is not up is that um, there's a full integration with our current intranet system. So Mark uh, Schumacher has been working, uh, you know, uh, on the intranet and getting that back up and going uh, and also with our project database so uh, what will happen is you'll see a lot more seamless uh, integration with the way media assets are handled. Uh, and one of those things that uh, another issue that comes up is communicating in general about what's been uploaded or what's been shot. Uh, one of the features that I liked about it is that as we upload photos, there will be ways to uh, showcase on the internet, hey, this is the latest project that has been uploaded. So you'll be able to see a a set of images of a new project that was uh, uploaded. Also, the integration with the project data, which Bill showed you earlier, is pulling directly from the project database that Mark has uh, been working on over, year, over the years. So everything is associated now with a project number. Uh, you will be able to get basic information. And over time, as we uh, evaluate the project data that we're capturing, uh, you may see additional fields that are uh, now presented uh, and then the ability to export directly out of a project page into some form of a template or, or tear sheet PDF or something like that because there's integration with the Adobe uh, uh, Acrobat product as well. So we'll be looking at upgrades for that. Uh, and then, you know, just to reiterate, uh, you know, Bill and I are, I mean, we, we've only had this product uh, about a month here. Uh, Mark Schumacher has worked tirelessly trying to get us access to the images. Uh, this migration was supposed to take place uh, and you know have this product up and running by mid-summer. So we're pushed the schedule way ahead. So you might find some issues that Bill mentioned as you're searching through and some weird project names or maybe keywords aren't quite showing up as expected. Um, you know, just be patient with us with that, but also make a note. And uh, you know, as Bill said, we'll be sending out a follow-up email that you can submit a form and just help us uh, make sure to clean up all of the data because we are uh, at a super accelerated schedule here, uh, but we wanted to get this in everybody's hands so we can start using, so you can start using the assets again uh, and searching for project images. So, big shout out to Mark on that. <laughs> Another, uh, just to let us also, you know, another advantage with this is that you do have the capability to create your own albums of your favorite images. So they're easier to share within the office if you're expecting some images to uh, be put together in a presentation or document. So you can start creating your own albums of images that you like to use repeatedly. Yeah, yeah, it's very useful for that. Sure. Um, can, uh, Bill, uh, yep. uh, Bill kind of just, we went through that quickly, but to Glenn's point, just a quick follow-up. So if you go to Public Realm uh, and oh. you look over here, your albums, or I'm oh, sorry, go sorry. back one. Okay. So if you click on uh, Public Realm here, if you look over here on the right-hand side, uh, there is a way to share, and I don't know if you showed how to, to do that, but if you click on Modify Sharing, right here on this form here in User, uh, you can type the person that you want to share that with, and we'll have different user groups that we can share it with. And uh, 
Glenn, your point, maybe we could create a, uh, a studio-wide uh, user group. So if you just want to share your images with the Sausalito group rather than the full firm, we could have a user group set up for Sausalito. Uh, but you are able to uh, share your album that you created, uh, which I think from a knowledge sharing standpoint uh, and workflow efficiency, if you've created a great album of all of your favorite I don't know, uh, outdoor furniture, uh, and you feel that it would be useful to share with anybody, uh, with everybody, you can then select a user group to share with the entire firm. And when they log in and look at their albums, uh, you would then see, uh, you know, Glenn's uh, favorite project images or, you know, on a particular subject and that is shared with everybody. So over time, that album uh, creation, that album sharing will will grow and you can search within albums to find particular things because I, you know, there's so much work sometimes that goes into uh, curating a, a group of images. Uh, one of the features that we really liked about this was the ease and use of uh, sharing those albums uh, at a firm wide level. All right. There are no more questions. Hey, David. Uh, yes. David, this, is, this is John Pasolino. Is is the top 20 and the top 200 supposed to populate based on usage? Well, there, there. Actually, yeah. Can you go to that real quick, Bill? Um, yeah, good question. So uh, the way that we're handling it now, uh, the way the system works, uh, you basically create a rank to a number, of, uh, a rank number for different searches. So what we've done is uh, the top 20 of a particular project will show first, and then it goes to the top. So just uh, search for any project. So Hunter's Point. Since it's there. So if we look at just a particular project um, search, what you'll see here is rank number one, and that will showcase the top 20 images, or at least that we've manually selected as a keyword as the top 20. Um, and then it goes into the top 200. And then one other feature we've been working on, and we will we hopefully we'll have this done uh, over the next month, is if, uh, Bill, you go in and type website photos, as the next layer of uh, search criteria and usage. Oh, yep. Now you can see all of the photos that we're using on a particular project on the website. So it's a further way to refine and find what you're looking for. Um, we, we were close to finishing that, but due to the technical issues we had, we had to uh, put that on hold, but we'll get working uh, on that again. And then the other uh, interesting uh, piece here on the right hand side is you can sort by a number of different um, pieces of metadata. And one of the ones that I like is that uh, I think there is a most views. So it, it's constantly tracking how many uh, views of particular images are downloaded. And you can, uh, on the right hand side, sort by that and see who's using what images or what images are getting used the most for a particular subject. And over time, we can uh, add to this list depending on what, what search criteria we want to make available. It, it doesn't move like if something is getting hit a lot and it's not in the top 20, does it ultimately get moved into the top 20? Uh, the top 20 is actually a, actually a manual keyword that we're adding to it uh, based either on feedback or what you know the imaging group uh, has selected as the top 20. Uh, those could be added over time, uh, you know, if, if somebody lets us know that we want to add it, you know, you want to add a few images. We don't, at least I don't know, we can look in this, but we haven't given the ability for every general staff or user to add keywords like top 20 or something like that. But we can certainly talk about administrative privileges if, if, if you want to review, or maybe we can set up a workflow where you review the top 20 images. Uh, but, you know, the other way is that if an image is being used a lot, again, it'll showcase in the sort by either through most downloaded or most views or something like that. But currently, the top 20 is manually selected keywords that uh, the administrators do, you know, select. Cool. Well, we're excited to roll this out. Uh, again, it's, it's a bit of a work in progress, but we wanted to get it in your hands so we can start uh, getting back to business again. But uh, we're confident that over time, it's you know it's, it's really going to change the uh, 
the general workflow and accessibility and, and knowledge uh, exchange. Uh, great product and thanks for the input on it. Yes. David, Mark Schumacher here. Um, yeah. uh, just quick administrative note. I have sent out emails with your password and login information to everyone that we uh, knew of in the, the, the West Coast offices. So if you are missing an email, please, please let me know and I will set you up with your account. But I just sent out something like 150 emails. So I'm hoping everyone is covered here today. Um, Ed, I just want to let you know it's, it's out there. And please, please contact me if you don't see that. Great. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. Uh, thank you, Christina from Open Asset for joining us. And um, Keep coming back to us for any questions. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.